In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a personalized pillow that you can use for any gift or any occasion. If you're new here, my name is Nisha. Welcome to Little Craft Nest. And if you're interested in crafting and Cricut tutorials, be sure to hit that subscribe button. The items you're going to be needing for today's project are a blank pillow canvas. I get mine from Ikea and I have used them over and over again. They have been fabulous. I often go to Ikea just specifically to pick up pillow blanks. You can also get the pillow inserts there as well. You will need some heat transfer vinyl. I'm going to be using my Cricut Maker today. I'll also be using weeding tools, a brayer. I'm using my large 12 by 24 inch mat today, but you can also use a 12 by 12 mat. And I'll be using my large heat press but if you don't have a large heat press, that's okay. You can also use your Cricut Easy Press. Let's jump onto Design Space and get started. So in the last video, I showed you how to take a photo and turn it into an SVG. So if you didn't see that video, go and check that out. Today we're going to be using this SVG that we created and making a pillow. So first I'm going to delete our photo because we don't need that. And today I'm going to be putting this image on a 20 inch throw pillow. So the first thing I want to do is make my template. So I'm going to go over to shapes. I'm going to select a square and I'm just going to size our square to 20 inches up at the top. And I'm just going to zoom out here at the bottom left hand corner so we can see the whole thing. And then we can go up to operations and I'm going to change this square to a guide. That way our machine will know not to cut this square out. This is just going to be our template for our pillow. And I'm also going to go up to arrange and just send this square to the back. And let's just move everything here to the center of the screen. I'm going to remove my grid lines here just so I have a clean background. So between the two rulers at the top hand corner, just click on that little square in between the rulers and that removes our grid lines and that way you have a clearer surface to work on. So I'm going to size my image here on the pillow. Now keep in mind when you are making pillows, you don't want your image going right to the top or right to the side of your pillow because when your pillow sits on the couch, it kind of squishes in a little bit. So you definitely want to make sure you're keeping a big border around your pillows. Now I have probably made well over a hundred of these pillows using the Ikea pillowcases. So I already have my sizes memorized and what works well. And that number is actually the largest size that we can cut out on our Cricut mats. So 11.5 inches. So I usually make my image no bigger than 11.5 inches. So if we go up to height here, we can just adjust our image and type in 11.5. And you're probably thinking that looks kind of small on the pillow, but that's okay. Cause like I said, your pillow does smush down when it gets thrown on the couch and it's actually a lot bigger than you think it is. Now I wanna go ahead and add some text right beside our image. So I'm just going to do that. We're going to click on text. I'm going to zoom back in here because it looks very small. And I'm just going to type my greatest blessings. Now I don't like that my words are all in the same text box because I wanna rearrange each word separately on the canvas. And Cricut has this new feature that is super cool. So what we can do is go over to advance at the top of your screen and you can either ungroup letters so they're all individual or you can actually ungroup lines now which is pretty cool. So I'm going to click on ungroup two lines and now you'll notice each of our words is in its own text box which is super cool. So I didn't have to insert three separate text box. I can just type in all my letters and then we can move our text around and I absolutely love this feature. It saves so much time. So I'm going to move my text over to my pillow and resize it, play around with it, play around with the font until I find one that I love. And then we'll be able to go ahead and make it. So I'm just going to play around with this for a bit until I'm happy with my design. So I decided to do some Google searching and I changed the quote on my pillow to grandchildren, the greatest blessing my heart will ever know. And I made each text line here 7.5 inches but you can tell not everything is evenly spaced. 
So to do that, I'm going to select each of my lines here, and then I'm going to go up to the top and under a line, I'm just going to center everything. So center horizontally. And then I'm going to go back to a line again, and we're going to distribute vertically. And that's going to ensure even spacing between each of our lines. Now I'm going to select each of my lines again here, and I'm just going to attach these all together at the bottom right. And I actually think I want to size them down a little bit. So I'm just going to grab the corner here and just size them down a bit. And now if we select our text and we select our image, and if you look at the top, our width right here is 14.4 inches wide. Now that's okay. If we attach these, we can cut this out on our large 12 by 24 inch mat. Or what you can do if you don't have a 12 by 24 inch mat is still use your 12 by 12 mat and don't attach your two images. So you're just gonna have your image cut out and then the text cut out. But I'm going to cut this out on my 12 by 24 inch mat. That way I'm not trying to figure out how to align these two together when I place them on my pillow. So I'm going to select both my images here and I'm going to go down to the bottom right and click on attach. And I'm going to zoom out. And this is what our pillow is going to look like when it's complete. And then we can go ahead and click on make it. Now our warning above here is just telling us to use our large mat. So we're going to click on okay. And because we're using heat transfer vinyl, we need to mirror our image. So below our mat here where it says mirror, we're just going to click on that little slider dot. If we didn't mirror our image, our text would end up coming out backwards on our pillow. So once that's done, go ahead and click on continue. And then we're going to select iron on and we'll load our mats and get this cut out. I'm using black heat transfer vinyl here and you always want to remember when you're working with heat transfer vinyl to put this shiny side facing down. So the dull side will be facing you. We're going to line it up here at the top of our mat and just smooth that down. And then I just like to take my brayer and go over it to get any of those bumps and bubbles out of my vinyl. And I'm just going to slide my mat underneath the tabs of my Cricut Maker and I'm going to press my flashing button and we're going to have this cut out. Now I'm just sliding my paper cutter underneath my Maker here just because my mat is so long and I don't want it hanging down below my desk. Now because there are a lot of details going on in this cut, it may take some time for your machine to cut out, but don't worry, it will get cut. So once you've ejected your image, it's the fun part now of weeding out this entire design. So I'm just going to take this off the mat. And before I begin weeding, one of the things I like to do is if there's any vinyl without any of your image on, I like to just cut and save those pieces. That way we're not wasting any vinyl. So I have this big chunk here that I could use this vinyl for another project down the road. So I just cut my extra pieces into squares or rectangles and I could easily use this for another project. So I'm just cutting some access off the edges. Just make sure you don't cut your design because that would not be good. Now, here are my favorite weeding tools. This is just a nail polish holder that I got off of Amazon, and it's great for holding those tiny little pieces. Now, this is my favorite weeding tool here. It looks like a pen, it's sparkly, and if you click on it, you can just see it's a tiny little needle at the end, but it's just so great, especially for those tiny little pieces. And I got this from TechWrap, so if you're interested in that, go check it out. I'll leave a link down below in the description. I like to start weeding at the outside corner here. And I take the outside off first. I know some people like to start from the inside, but I really like to see the shape of my design. So I just take the outside off first and then I start working on removing all the inside pieces. Now, if you're having trouble seeing your design, it's great to have an overhead light to use. I'm using a ring light right now. It really just helps me see those pieces better. I know Cricut also has a light you can use or you can use a bright pad. Another thing I do is open up design space and 
if I'm not sure if that piece is supposed to be weeded or left on my carrier sheet, I just go ahead and check my computer just to make sure that I am weeding the right pieces. So it's great to leave that open as well. So our image is all weeded now and ready to go on a pillow. So I have my pillowcase here. We're just going to open it up. And before we go ahead and put our design on it, I am first going to give it a quick press in my heat press. I have set my heat press to 150 degrees Celsius. And the reason I am going to press it before I put my design on it, first is to get rid of all these wrinkles in the material. And second is to get out any moisture that is in this fabric. And that is going to help our design adhere a lot better. You may notice that I have this white sheet of paper here on my heat press. That's just a Teflon sheet to protect any materials that I'm using and also to protect my heat press. If you don't have a Teflon sheet, you can also use parchment paper on top of your vinyl designs. One more thing I'm going to do is fold my pillowcase in half, and that way I'll be able to find the center of my pillowcase and be able to apply my design a lot easier. Now, one last thing we want to do before we put our design on our pillowcase is just take a lint roller and try to remove any extra fibers or dirt that is on your material. Now we have our design here and I'm also going to fold this in half so I know where my center line is and then I'm going to use that line on my design and match that with the line that I made on my heat press. Now not every t-shirt and not every pillowcase has the fabric cut perfectly so you may need to allow for a little lenience but I also do like to take out my ruler and measure before I press anything just to make sure it's on exactly where I want it to be. So we wanna have the same distance from the top of our design here. So I'm taking the highest point of my design and measuring it to the top of the pillow and then the lowest point of my design to the bottom of the pillow. And then I'm going to do the same for the sides as well. Now, because your pillow is normally like sitting down on a couch, if you want, you can have your design go up a little higher so have less space at the top than you do at the bottom because when your pillow is on the couch it's going to scrunch a bit at the bottom and so you don't want to lose the image when your pillow is sitting on your furniture. So once you have it in the place you want you're just going to smooth it out really good on your pillow and that way it's not going to move when I transfer it over to my heat press. Now if you don't have a large heat press like I do that is perfectly fine. You can use a Cricut Easy Press, you can use a home iron, but a home iron does take a lot more work, a lot more pressure, and it's not something I recommend. So you can use your Cricut Easy Press or a large heat press. And if you're using a Cricut Easy Press, go on to Cricut's heat guide, which I'll also link down below in the description, and I'll give you the exact amount of time and pressure that you need to put your design on top of your pillow. Now I'm using a large heat press, not an easy press, so the times for my large heat press are actually going to be shorter than it would be for an easy press. I'm only going to be pressing this for 12 to 15 seconds. And then we're just going to peel off our carrier sheet here. Now here is our finished pillowcase. It is gorgeous. And if you want to know if you have pressed your design on long enough, just look very closely at your vinyl to make sure you can see some of the texture of the pillow showing through your vinyl and then you know you have pressed it on long enough. Now all we have to do is stuff our pillow insert inside. And here is our finished product. I hope you enjoyed today's project. I had a lot of fun and I absolutely love this pillow. If you have any questions at all, leave them down below in the comments. And again, if you wanna learn how to make this design here, go check out my last video. I will leave that link down below in the description. And I hope to see you on more crafting adventures.